Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and in my latest Son of update video or news video I eluded some things that I've done on the iHost with some Node-RED uh, development and that's how you can create a trigger on sunset or sunrise or basically these type of events which are not linked to a specific time and the date because when you try to create a new scene in, uh, in the iHost um, then when you add a timer functionality, you can only set up a specific, you know, a day and a time. Well, day of the week and, and an hour and a minute. So you can't pick something which is, let's say, a sunset. And if you want some garden lights, which, I mean, I do have some garden lights which turn on automatically when the sun goes down. Um, it would be quite in inconvenient coming back to this scene and modifying it every week just to make it in sync with you know how the sun sets uh, in my area. So I wanted something which is a little bit more, uh, well, a little bit smarter than that. And this video is about how I did that. And basically, just to summarize the functionality, what I have created is I'm using the functionality in Node-RED where I could create a device in the iHost, which appears just like another, you know, regular son of device, but it's actually, it's a virtual device. It's not linked to a physical, you know, basic or uh, touch or, you know, T1. And this is uh, this night light trigger. So this night light trigger is, uh, it looks like a switch. It acts like a switch. And then it would get automatically turned on by Node-RED whenever sun, sunset comes and it would turn off, let's say, at sunrise or whatever specified time. So with this, what I can do is I can go back to the scenes and I can create a scene which says night lights on. And I can tie this to the event when the night light trigger is turned on. And let's say I have a couple of night lights, for example, not this one, but let's say uh, I have two, which is connected to my NS panel, and I want to turn them on. And that's it. So with this um, scene, whenever this uh, sunset comes, it's going to, uh, well, Node-RED is going to activate this virtual switch and that virtual switch will trigger this scene and it's going to turn on the lights and i can create another one which turns them off which is going to be exactly the same but then it triggers on this night light trigger being switched off and then it's going to turn these outputs off or other outputs as well so i need to you know two scenes to actually do that and then everything is going to be controlled from node-red which is also running on the ihost in addition, what I have done is I've created one more uh, device, which is called the Night Lights Enabled or Enabler. And what it does is um, it, it enables and disables this switch. So let's say I have a couple of examples when if I leave home or I know I'm going to be on a holiday, I don't want these garden lights to turn automatically on and off. And what I could do is I can come to the scenes and I can just, you know, disable these uh, scenes. But let's say if you have a very complicated setup and you have a lot of scenes, probably it's going to be quite difficult and time consuming to find them all. So I thought I'm just going to have this uh, big, like global uh, on off button. So if this is off, this will never get triggered because it just disables this whole timer. And then when I come back, I turn it on and then everything works. So that's the whole functionality and let's see how it works in Node-RED. So this one is running on, well, as I said, Node-RED and the Node, this Node-RED instance is also running on iHost. And actually this is all the flow that you need to implement all this functionality. The rest is for something else. And uh, I'm going to include this flow in the video description, but it is fairly simple. So you can just build this one yourself as well fairly quickly. First of all, uh, let me just mention the nodes that are required for this. So for the timer, I'm using Node Red Country Big, ti Big Timer. So you can type it in here and then install it. And then for all the EV Link stuff, I'm using the Node Red Country EV Link Cube. So the EV Link Cube is all these blue ones, and the Big Timer is this uh, big um, green one. So first of all, we need to create these two virtual devices and you do this by this register device node and you need an inject node which executes on startup and then it creates this, um, this device. 
So here you specify the name of the device. So this is the name that appears in Node-RED and this is the name that appears here, so in, in the iHost. And you have to give it a special unique ID and you can just you know, type a random number or you can use a service like uuidgenerator.net and it's going to generate you a UUID and you can just copy that. And it's going to be a category switch, a capability is power, and then you specify a manufacturer node, a model and version, which again, it's just like some information which appears here. So it is not really uh, important what you put here. You can put uh, your own names or something like that. You need a service IP, that's the IP of your iHost, and in the tags and the state, you just put empty curly brackets. And you do the same for the enabler, which is, um, it's, it's all the same, it has a different name and the device name and the, well, the device ID is unique, so that's different, but all the rest is the same. And when you execute this, all it does, it creates these two devices. So these, de these two devices will just magically appear on your, uh, on your iHost. And next, the important thing is this big timer. And here, when you edit or when you yeah, modify your big timer, the thing is, the most important thing is here. So you specify when to turn on, and then you can see that you have a couple of these options, day and dawn, dusk, solar, moon, moonrise, sun, uh, so all of these. And uh, so you can do sunset or like dusk or dawn, it's really up to you. And you can also offset this one. So if you want the, your um, lights to come on before sunset, you can off offset them by let's say half an hour. And then you can, use this, you can use the same for the off time. So again, I put sunrise here, but I might as well just put, you know, 11 o'clock. And then you can do an off, offset here as well. But let, let me just leave it on sunrise. Next, you have to specify your location, so latitude and longitude. So obviously the, uh, the timer knows where you are. And there are a bunch of other fu functions here, so you can specify it if you want this to run on a specific day of the month or a specific month of the year or a specific week of the month, sorry, week of the year. So, you know, bunch of options here. You can um, even specify it for, uh, you know, months or days of the week. Yeah, there's a lot of options. I wanted to keep it simple. So this one comes on at sunset and then uh, goes off at sunrise 24 seven, uh, sorry, every, every day of the week, every day of the year. Okay. Oh, one more thing that I mentioned and it's important that in the, you specify the on message to be on and the off message as off. And then we are going to use the first port of this big timer, which is going to send the message on or off when the sunrise comes and when the sunset comes. And we put this into a switch node, which looks at the message.payload and it looks for on and off. And then based on that, it's going to trigger these control device nodes. And in the top control device node, we are going to switch, the, switch something on on the iHost, which is a switch, and the night light trigger, and we switch it on. And for the other one, we switch it off. Yeah, simple. And I provided these test nodes as well, so if you want to test. So if I do on, now it's on. And if I do off, now it's off. So yeah, that's it. So this is, that, that's the, this is the code which does all the switching on and off. And that's the piece of code which does the global enabler. So for the global enabler, obviously you would um, use your, you, you know, use this or the cast um, screen or, you know, any of the controls to control this global enabler on and off. And um, you can also switch this trigger on and off manually, but ideally because this is controlled by Node-RED, you should, I don't know, like, you can't really make this read only or um, disabled, uh, you can just probably hide it for, um, from any UI that you would use, like a cast screen, because, you know, this is supposed to be controlled automatically. But this one you can, you can do. And here I'm listening, so I'm using this event state node 
to listen all these enabler and I'm listening all the device status changes, which is basically the turning them on and off. And um, the output of this is a JSON, but it comes through as a text, so we need to convert it uh, to a JSON. And then we put it into a switch node. And here I'm looking for the, you know, whether it's turned on and off. And actually this is stored in the message, as you can see here, as the message.payload.payload.par.par state. So you can put a debug node here and then you can see what, what data comes off, but that's where it is stored and it is sending the text on or off. So I created a, a switch which says on or basically anything else. And if it's on, I'm sending the message auto or changing the message to auto. And if it's off, then I'm changing the message to stop <clears throat> because you can control this big timer using a couple of messages, which is actually documented here. So you have the auto, which is just going to set it to auto mode. So it would use the, uh, the settings to turn on and off, in my case, sunrise and sunset. And if you put it to stop, it's just not going to do anything. And I can test it here. So now, sorry, this enabler is on. So you can see that my timer is off and the sunset is in two hours and 36 minutes. And if I turn this one off, then it stops the timer. So it says stopped manual override. And I can enable it again. Yeah, and now it's back on. And um, that's it. So <clears throat> this is all you need. And as I said, these devices would automatically appear. Uh, probably the only thing is, I mentioned it before that this is being controlled by Node-RED, so you shouldn't be really clicking on it. And again, if you are using this cast screen, what you can do is just not show this device on your you know, UI, so you don't accidentally click on that. But of course, you can show the, uh, the main uh, the, 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 the enabler, because that you can control. And, um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So why is it appearing in Chinese all of a sudden? This wasn't an issue before. But um, I think I didn't save the changes. Did I enable her? Save. That's weird. This wasn't Chinese before. So yeah, I have the enabler here. So this works from here. This is stopped. And now it is enabled. Maybe it's one of the latest updates. I need to set this uh, language to something else and back to English. But um, as I said, it's a simple flow. I think it has... Uh, you know, a bit more functionality with this whole global enabler. But again, if you don't need that, you, you just don't implement this part and you don't implement that and you don't have the extra button. And again, you could technically use these nodes to control your devices directly. But I thought that using this method that I create a virtual device and I use the built-in scene, it probably gives um, more control, a little bit more control and a little bit more overview of what your system is doing. Uh, um, especially if you are using your Node-RED for a lot of different things, probably it's easier to go to your smart scenes where you can just use, you know, sensible naming convention to, um, to name your scenes so you can just quickly go through them and then just see what is happening, how the system is configured, as opposed to, you know, know that having a lot of these things, you know, randomly controlling, well, not randomly, but, you know, a lot of these things controlling all your lights. Again, both of the methods worked. I wanted to show you this because I think it's a little bit more organized, but um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, both of them are possible. So it is really up to do whether you use my method or you just, you know, do everything in Node-RED. So I think that will be all for today. As I said, I'm going to leave all the resources in the video description. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.